Welcome to our Wall Street News Briefing Program. Today, New Mexico is set to receive nearly $39 million in federal funding for three major transportation projects, including a significant investment in the I-40 Tradeport Corridor, which will boost trade and develop hydrogen and electric-powered shipping vehicles. This funding aims to enhance the infrastructure from California to New Mexico, with regional hubs planned in Albuquerque and Arizona. Next, a survey by Bloomberg News suggests that Chinese and Indian stocks are expected to outperform other Asian markets in the second half of 2021. These emerging markets are gaining momentum due to anticipated interest rate cuts by the U.S. Federal Reserve, offering unique investment opportunities despite geopolitical risks. Lastly, Japan's demographic crisis is transforming its consumer market, with a notable shift in demand from baby diapers to adult diapers. As the country grapples with an aging population, Companies are pivoting to cater to the needs of the elderly, a trend also seen in other aging Asian societies. Please stay tuned for more details. Yahoo US, New Mexico is set to receive nearly $39 million in federal grants for three pivotal transportation projects. Bernalillo County will get $15 million to plan the I-40 Tradeport Corridor, a project aimed at enhancing trade along Interstate 40 from California to New Mexico. The initiative will include the development of hydrogen and electric fueling stations in the Albuquerque area and regional hubs in Kingman and Winslow, Arizona. This long-term project, expected to cost $38 billion, will transform the supply chain and boost local economies by creating new commercial activities and infrastructure. Additionally, Taos Pueblo will receive $14.3 million for road improvements, while $9.5 million will go towards a regional rural rapid transit system in northern New Mexico including the purchase of seven diesel-electric hybrid buses. The South China Morning Post, equities in China and India are emerging as top picks for investors in the second half of the year, with anticipated Federal Reserve interest rate cuts acting as a catalyst. A Bloomberg News survey of 19 Asia-based strategists and fund managers revealed a preference for Chinese stocks due to their low valuations and expected policy changes, while Indian stocks are favored for their post-election optimism and relative immunity to geopolitical tensions. Indian equities have surged following Prime Minister Narendra Modi's re-election, with the nation's stock market value surpassing $5 trillion in June. Analysts remain optimistic about Chinese stocks, expecting improvements in corporate earnings and a return of global funds despite recent corrections. The survey also highlighted that geopolitical tensions from the upcoming U.S. election could pose risks to Asian markets, but overall, Asian equities are expected to outperform their U.S. counterparts through the end of 2024. CNN, Japan's aging society is reshaping the baby care business as the country grapples with a demographic crisis. The number of babies born in Japan fell to a record low in 2023, while nearly 30% of the population is now 65 or older. This shift is driving demand for adult diapers, with the market expected to grow from $1.7 billion in 2023 to $1.9 billion by 2026. Companies like Aji Holdings are pivoting to focus on incontinence products for adults, ceasing baby diaper production for the domestic market. Meanwhile, other firms like Panasonic and Zojirushi are developing products tailored to the needs of senior citizens. Japan's situation mirrors broader trends in Asia, with countries like South Korea, Hong Kong, China, and Taiwan also experiencing declining birth rates. By 2050, several Asian territories will have some of the highest proportions of elderly populations globally prompting significant shifts in consumer markets and policy planning. Australian Broadcasting Corporation In Sydney's serene suburbs, a mystery has left residents of Willowy Road, Castle Cove, in turmoil. In July last year, 265 trees were illegally killed, some poisoned, others cut down with chainsaws, right next to people's homes. Despite the picturesque surroundings where mansions meet native bushland, no one saw or heard anything. The local council offered a $10,000 reward for information, but a year later, the crime remains unsolved. The community, living in multi-million dollar properties, is tight-lipped, fearing suspicion and abuse. There's a growing sense of disharmony as tree vandalism cases rise, threatening the green heart of Sydney. An underground industry thrives, with tree loppers like James revealing that wealthy clients often pay up to $15,000 to illegally remove trees, seeking better views or space for developments like swimming pools. The lack of regulation allows anyone with a chainsaw to operate, often without insurance or licenses, leading to widespread, untraceable tree vandalism. Yahoo US! Hurricane Barrel, a formidable Category 5 storm, wreaked havoc in the Caribbean before weakening to a Category 4 as it approached Jamaica. 
With sustained winds of 145 miles per hour, Beryl is expected to bring life-threatening conditions to Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. The storm, moving at 20 miles per hour, is forecast to pass near Jamaica on Wednesday and the Cayman Islands by Thursday, before heading towards Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Despite weakening, Beryl remains a significant threat. Earlier, it devastated Granada's Carriaco Island with 150 miles per hour winds, causing widespread power outages and structural damage. The last hurricane of this magnitude to hit Granada was Ivan in 2004. Meanwhile, the NHC is monitoring another system, Invest 96L, though its development chances are slim. Residents in affected areas are advised to stay vigilant as the storm's path and intensity continue to evolve. Yahoo US. Stocks are reaching record highs, driven by familiar market leaders. Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Costco, Meta, Microsoft, and Walmart all saw intraday records, while Nvidia dipped after a downgrade. The recent soft jobs report and potential for lower interest rates may be catalysts. Tech giants, especially those in the AI race, benefit from low interest rate environments, positioning them as key players in speculative investment booms. Piper Sandler's Michael Kantrowitz highlighted the dominance of a few companies, noting that the top 10 stocks account for nearly 40% of the S&P 500's market cap. This concentration reflects the AI trade's influence, making the index less representative of the broader market. For institutional investors, this dynamic poses challenges, as they seek returns that outperform the market while avoiding its volatility. The situation echoes past trends, like the 2020 Tesla rally, where investors bought leading stocks to match benchmark performance. As AI continues to drive market gains, portfolio managers face pressure to adapt or justify their strategies. Yahoo US reports that President Biden remains steadfast in his decision to run for re-election in 2024 despite increasing pressure from within his party to withdraw. His campaign finances, which include $240 million on hand, are in the spotlight. A new initiative, Next Generation PAC, aims to raise $100 million to support a potential replacement nominee or down-ballot races if Biden stays. If Biden withdraws, the allocation of his campaign funds becomes a significant issue particularly if Vice President Kamala Harris or another candidate takes the nomination. The Federal Election Commission would play a crucial role in determining how these funds could be utilized, with possibilities ranging from Harris taking control of the funds to the creation of a super PAC to support the new nominee indirectly. The Associated Press highlights a significant legal victory for Wisconsin's Democratic Governor Tony Evers, as the state Supreme Court ruled that the Republican-controlled Budget Committee cannot block his administration's conservation projects. This decision underscores the ongoing power struggle between Evers and Republican lawmakers, who have repeatedly obstructed his initiatives since he took office in 2019. The court's six-to-one ruling affirms that the Legislative Committee's unilateral blockages violate the constitutional separation of powers. This decision is a win for environmentalists and restores the executive branch's authority to distribute funds from the Knowles-Nelson Stewardship Program, which supports land acquisitions and environmental projects. The ruling also emphasizes the judiciary's role in maintaining checks and balances within state governance. Yahoo US also reports on Italy's latest effort to rejuvenate its rural areas, offering up to $32,000 for people to relocate to Tuscany and renovate homes. This initiative, part of the Residenzialità in Montagna 2024 program, is designed to combat the declining population in Italy's picturesque but dwindling small towns. To qualify for the grants, applicants must have lived in Italy for at least 10 years and commit to making the new house their primary residence. The program targets 76 small Tuscan towns, including San Casciano dei Bagni and Capri's Michelangelo, aiming to boost local economies and preserve these historic areas. Despite the allure of Tuscany's stunning landscapes and rich cultural heritage, the program's stringent residency requirements may limit its appeal. Yahoo US reports that Bitcoin's recent sharp decline in prices was triggered by MT Gox's initiation of customer repayments, causing fears of a potential sell-off in the crypto markets. Lucy Gasmerarian, founder and managing partner of Token Bay Capital, notes that while the repayment event was anticipated, any selling is likely to be staggered rather than immediate. She emphasizes that the real test for Bitcoin will come in the fall when market activity picks up, suggesting that this period will reveal whether Bitcoin faces a deeper correction. Gasmerarian advises taking a long-term view on Bitcoin, considering its fundamental utility and potential as a global digital currency, rather than focusing on short-term gains. 
BBC reports on the historic victory of independent candidate Iqbal Mohammed in the Dewsbury and Batley constituency, marking the first such win in Yorkshire since 1907. Mohammed secured 41% of the vote, significantly outpacing Labour's 8,707 votes. Residents attribute his success to his local roots and stance on Gaza, reflecting a broader dissatisfaction with traditional parties. Market stall owner Rachel Carter and civil servant Rahana Ismail express hopes that Mohammed's local understanding will address Dewsbury's decline. Voters like Manzur Ahmed and Layakatali Muller see Mohammed's election as a voice for Gaza, although some remain skeptical about his impact. Mohammed's campaign placards dominate the town, symbolizing a shift in political sentiment. Yahoo US highlights Tesla's impressive stock performance, with shares rising as much as 1.1% in early trading on Friday, extending a 40% rally over the last month. This surge follows strong quarterly delivery results and the inclusion of Tesla's Model Y in China's provincial government purchase list. Despite facing competition and waning EV demand in the US, Tesla's energy storage business and cost-cutting measures have bolstered investor confidence. Analysts like Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas and Wedbush's Dan Ives see Tesla's potential in AI and autonomous driving as key growth drivers. The upcoming Robotaxi event on August 8 is anticipated to further boost the stock, which has recovered from its year-to-date losses, jumping over 70% from its April lows. Yahoo US reported that Danish authorities have indicted Finland-based Nordia Bank for failing to prevent over $3.5 billion in money laundering by Russian clients between 2012 and 2015. The Danish Special Crime Unit, NSK, found that Nordia ignored warnings about suspicious transactions, leading to the most extensive indictment of money laundering in Denmark's banking sector. Nordia admitted to past shortcomings and has since invested 11 billion kroner in anti-money laundering measures. The bank expressed regret and expects to be fined, but no individuals were indicted. Yahoo US highlighted that US stock markets held near record highs as investors analyzed the June jobs report, which showed the economy adding 206,000 jobs, surpassing expectations. However, the unemployment rate rose to 4.1%, its highest since November 2021, suggesting a cooling job market. This data fueled speculation that the Federal Reserve might cut interest rates in September. Meanwhile, Samsung's profits soared due to the AI boom, while crypto-linked stocks like Coinbase and Marathon Digital fell. Investors are also closely watching political developments as the US presidential election approaches. Nikkei Asia reported that Imcure Pharmaceuticals' $234 million IPO in India attracted bids worth $11.2 billion, nearly 68 times the amount on offer. The Bain Capital-backed company focuses on women's health care and HIV treatments. The IPO was fully subscribed on the first day, with institutional buyers showing strong interest. MQ raised 8 billion rupees by issuing new shares, and the company is expected to benefit from its market-leading positions in gynecology and HIV treatments. Analysts believe MQ's stock is attractively priced and poised for a strong market debut. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Got a book so big and bright Open it and take a flight Learn about the stars and see Everything is here for me Flip the pages one by one Knowledge under the sun From dinosaurs to galaxies A world of endless mysteries Inside glow